So this is a little project I got on the go here now. Uh, what these are, these are off like a 2002 Mercury Marquis. They're a factory wheel that came off them. They're a 16-inch wheel, and I was looking for a wheel to dress up Wendy's Mustang. Now, her Mustang had these ones on it. They're a 14-inch wheel, uh, and they're a bit dated. They're 14s, and I was trying to bring it up to date, modernize it a bit, and I kind of like this type of look uh, for that car. I'm not looking to... Like, I have Kragers and, and aluminum slots and all that type of stuff here, but I think uh, I would like to put a little classy look on the Mustang. And I managed to pick up these wheels and tires uh last year or whatever it was and uh i had to get some work done on them i had them completely stripped of uh, everything that was on because most of these wheels they just come and they're like a gray finish on them they got a clear coat on them okay and if you look at them you can see like the the coatings on them and some and like where it was corroded and stuff like that i had these dipped and there was a couple had a couple of bends in them and i had them straightened so i spent a couple hundred dollars on getting them stripped and getting them bent so I'm probably into them. I paid four hundred dollars for the wheels and tires, so I'm in them now for six hundred bucks. Uh, what I want to do here now is I want to polish polish this band right along here, and I'm going to paint the center of the wheel here. I also got some centers to put in it, something a bit different. I want to take a factory wheel and dress it up a bit and try, you know, and make it look so it's not so factory looking. Okay. Uh, my plan is I, I ordered a set of centers online that I can put in this here, little ones that bolts on. Because uh, the ones belong to these here just looks too modern. I'm going to put an old style center on it. And I wanted to polish this band. These bands are usually not really polished. And I want to change the color on this center here. I played around with a few colors. have a color in mind. First thing I got to do here now is I got these all ready to go. Is I got to strip the band of all the clear coat that's on them. And all that type of stuff. Now some fellas use stripper and all that type of stuff. I went and bought some stuff on uh, Amazon. Some tools. And let's see how it works out. So I picked up a few things. I bought these for the grinder, trying to speed up the process. You can hand sand all them, but I'm going to try to see if I can strip them down with uh, a grinder to get everything down to a finish where I can actually just sand it with like uh, 500 and 1,000 and stuff like that. And I also picked up this buffing wheel that will go on the buffer itself for polish and stuff. And I'm just trying to polish that band and I'm trying to speed up the process as much as I can. I don't want to be at it all day. So I picked all this stuff up. So I'm going to take these now. I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to start with. Probably going to start with this green one. And uh, experiment with these here. And see what I come up with. So you look here. You can see. You can see this almost like this uh, brownish, goldish color type of greenish color stuff. That's like a clear coat that's been on this here. And then this is a bit of corrosion that was around the ear and it flaked off and everything. So what I'm trying to do is I'm cleaning all this off. All this green set off so it's like this here. And I got to sand that a bit out. Biggest problem you got with a lot of this stuff here is just trying to get it cleared off it. And I just, all I'm doing is I'm going to polish this band from this line out. I'm going to polish that. I'm going to paint the center of the wheels, okay? But the hardest part is going to be trying to get all this stuff off. So I got, I picked up these here on Amazon. They're just little strip wheels. I thought they were going to be uh, where they got a backing pad on them there, which is so, I, ha I can't do the sides for very long. I can only use the flat side. I was kind of hoping it was going to be like that thick. And you could be able to wear out the entire side of it, but that's all you can do. I'll manage what I got. I didn't pay a lot for them on Amazon anyway. Old cheap thing, so I tried. figured I'd give them a try out. So I'm going to go ahead now and start stripping this off here and see how long it takes me to strip it off. Um, I played around with one of the wheels last year and sanded the edges of it, and it was murder trying to get all this off it and to sand it all and then turn, turn around and bring it up. Once it gets to a certain point, it'll sand and come up nice. You bring it up with like 320... You know, 600, 800, 1,000, you know, 1,500, and then you can polish it, right? So, that's where usually the way I'm going to do it. And I want the polishing process, wants to hopefully, that's going to speed it up even more again. Let's get stripping. Easy as that. Jeez, that's fantastic. One spot here, there you go. Here's where all the flakes and everything are too. Let's sand that off. Wow. 
That takes that off pretty easy. No issues there. You can see the difference in it. This goes around. I'm going to go ahead now and get all this stripped off with that there. And then uh, we'll go from there. So I got them all stripped down. Jeez, I got a decent shine on it now. But, uh, oh, she ate them, I can tell you that. They, they don't last very long. They're great on the flat. But if you've got to get the inside corner edges, you can see I brings up in that. So they didn't last long. I used two of them. And I used uh, that one there. That was a bit more aggressive. That was great for in the big, heavy pitted areas that were in here. I used that there to clean all that off there. And then I stepped up then to that one there. I also used this one here as well. That was a little bit more aggressive than that one. And I, and I brought up these spots then farther again. Then I went over and done the wheels with this here. So I got them all done. I got the wheels all stripped and all done. So I managed to have enough material for that. What I'm doing here now is along the edges here to some curb rash on these little lips here. And I'm just going to go over now with the oscillator and knock them down there with a bit of hundreds on the oscillator. So I got all them sanded all the way around there. I just took a little skim off the entire outer edge of it there. Just for anywhere there was any little flaws. Now there's still some little marks and everything here and there on the edges. Over here is a couple of little dimples and marks and everything, that type of stuff. I'm not getting carried away with this. Uh, this is a driver and I just like to have it so you look at it from 10 feet and it looks nice, right? You can really, really go to hell with this, right? Sanding all these down and have everything just perfect on them, right? So... But uh, I'm trying to get this car on the road, and I want to get these done. So, nah, now the fun begins. Just hand sanding. Um, just machines, guys, got that does all this here. Like, um, we used to do a lot of uh, aluminum wheels back in the, the 80s and that. And when we used to do, like, aluminum slots and stuff like that, all we did was just use sandpaper. Simple old sandpaper, sand them down. And we usually, like, sanded them from one stage to the next. And, like, what I mean by one stage to the next, we started off, if they were really bad, we'd do them 100, then 220, and 320 and 400 probably six or eight hundred then a thousand and twelve hundred and usually when you got to twelve hundred usually then you can start using compounds and, and buffing them and stuff like that right uh, sometimes you can bring them right up to fifteen hundred two thousand three thousand whatever if you're really going to hell with it right but i just want to say like a uh, machine finish with a nice shine on it here this looks pretty good here now but now i'm going to finish it off more than that because i still have to get rid of some of these pits that I got in here, I gotta sand them, so I gotta get a bit of hunter paper now and, and sand all that section here and get all that out. So let the sanding begin. Here now, and I got my selection of sandpaper dug out, just stuff I got kicking around a while, it's all different sizes I've been collecting over the years. This is what I got laid out here now, okay? This is 100, okay? I'm using, like, I'm not using this because of a certain style, it's only the grit. I have an abundance of this stuff when. When I used to be block sand, so it's 100, it's probably 120 now, it's wore out a small bit, but I saves it uh, and reuses it again. That's one thing about sandpaper, a lot of times you can reuse it because, like, if you got a sheet of piece of 100 and you wear it out a bit, it's like 120 then, right? So that's just uh, the way it works. So I'm going to start off with this here on the heavy stuff, that's 180, or sorry, that's 100. This is 180, I'll have to go over all of this here with 180 and then anything else I want to do. I'll go from 180 to 220 that's what this one here is 220 this is 320 this is 400 this is 600 this is the dry process that seems like a lot of work sand the whole rim with that or the spots with that the spots with that the whole rim 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 with that that's the way you do it it's the way i've always done it uh it's to time consuming uh but uh like if you try to skip between the sandpapers it just becomes a nightmare and that extra bit of step that it takes to gradually stepping up in sandpaper is fine. Now, when I get to this point here, I'll be going up again. I'll be going, I'll be going with water paper. I'll go 800, 1200, and I think I got 2000 there. You know, yeah, something like that. Anyway, I'll be bringing it up. I'll, when I'm happy with it, then I'll bring it up to compound and then you'll be buffing it. Okay. 
So I'm just going to go ahead now and get started and start sanding it with the, the some of the spots that I didn't like on it. I'm going to do it with 100 first and then I'll just go up from there. Now if you look at right here, you can see the blackness there. That's corrosion that was on the wheel. Now I'm going to have to take that there now and take the bit of 100 and I'm going to have to sand them areas there. All I'm going to do is just sand these spots here with 100 to get the corrosion, as much of the corrosion I can off them as I possibly can. Okay, I'll just sand them there, just keep sanding them till a lot of that blackness is gone. You're still going to have a couple of small spots, but I'll get most of it off. You can really get carried away with this, and again, I'm just going giving these a good quick cleanup. So I got everything sanded off to all the spots I didn't want to see. You can see them down here, the little few spots. Got them all sanded with 100. Now I'm going to go over all them spots now with a bit of 180. Same process as before. I'll just sand all the spots like that. Now a lot of the spots you can probably still see little spots here and there on that there. Uh, I'm only giving myself so much time to work on each rim. I can spend hours upon hours upon hours sanding this if I wanted to. But I'm not going at that. I'm just giving myself a... You know, timeline, spend 15 minutes getting everything done, or 10 minutes sanding each layer, and then go from there. That way I can get these rims done. They'll look good from 10 feet, you know, stand up next to the car. It's just that if you get right up close, you'll see little imperfections, but I'm not worried about that on this one. Right? Okay, this is a driver. So I'm going to get these sanded now, all in spots again. I'm going to do them all again now, 180. You may be noticing, like I'm using the stick it um, to sand this, it's not for no particular reason. I only have 180 in stickets. I don't have no 180 in regular sheet paper. If I had regular sheet paper, I'd probably just use it on that. It's just that whatever I had there in the right grits, I use that paper. Not because of any particular reason of saying this is better or whatever. Now these are nice when they're folded in half for sanding, right? So I got the, all the rim done with uh, 180. I went over and I done it all. After I sanded all the spots, I went and sanded the whole works of it all around. Did everything again with 180. It looks pretty rough. It's got a lot of scratches and everything in it. Never worry about that. That just shows you that it's coming apart. It's coming up on you. And what you'll find is that each time you sand it with a different sandpaper, you'll see the scratches before so you can sand it so them scratches are gone. And so on. That's the way it goes. All right. So I'm going to go ahead now. I got some 220 here. I'm going to repeat the whole process again. This is taking me about 10, 15 minutes to do on each band, right? It's slow. You can get tools for it, uh, especially stuff. But when you're, you know, when all you've got is a bit of sandpaper and a bit of elbow grease, you can make do. Got it all done now with uh, 220. I'm going to move on to 320. Come up another one. Sand the whole rim again. Same process. I moved up from 320. I'm going to do a wheel now with 400. While I'm finishing it off here now, this is a red scotch pad. Uh, I love these things. These are great. Uh, it's pretty well equal to like 400. Uh, somewhere around there that's the grid of it but you can really get into the corners and stuff like that with these these are great for that um, I got to finish now to the scotch pad 400 what I went and did I was going to start sanding this with 600 800 1500 2000 that type of thing I was going to do with that route uh, but I started to experiment with something and uh, played around with uh, the buffing wheel that I bought and I'm going to show you what I figured out what you're hearing in the background is rain. It's a miserable day here, but I got the doors open. What I got here, I bought these buffing wheels on Amazon and the design. I went online looking at guys that were doing a lot of wheel polishing on big trucks and stuff like this. And I noticed a lot of fellas were using these type wheels. What I went did is I got my buffer that I buffs cars with, which is variable speed, okay? And I mounted it on that so I can adjust the speed and everything. So that was the buffing wheels that I'm using. These here are called like polish sticks 
Okay, I'm willing to tell you these have been kicking around in my toolbox a good 25 years. I've never ever used them. We're talking about okay. The way these work is that that's coarse, that's a medium, that's a fine. Okay. What you do is you put them on the wheel, you turn the wheel on, and you, and you, and you put it in so that gets into the compound, and then that wheel is a, a compound, and you polish the wheel. Okay. I wanted to experiment with these to see how much these here would work and how far I need to go with the wheels to polish them up. I was quite impressed. So here's the actual wheel. Um, I'm more than happy with that finish there. If you get up really close, it's still got flaws and stuff like that in it. But to me, that there is amazing compared to what it was, okay? These wheels never came polished from the factory. They were clear coated and they had this discolor on them is what it was, right? So polishing them up to this here was amazing. And all I did is I went and polished them with this one first. Polished the whole wheel with that one. Then I went over the wheel again with this one here and polished the whole wheel with that one. Then I finished it up with this one here and polished it with this one. Then I went back and I went over them uh, by hand with this auto saw. Now this is the stuff I've been using forever and ever. And this is all I used to polish, used to polish wheels, okay? I would have took this up to like 1500 and then done it with this here. But I wanted to try see how the wheel would do with them sticks. So it saves me a lot of time. This is just gives it a nice finish on it. Uh, a nice polish you can actually you know bring a nice shine up on it and all that type stuff so i was more than happy with this so now i got the one wheel polished i just gotta go polish the other three so i'm getting ready now to polish one of the wheels uh, all i did is i got a couple of pieces of square stock it was just scrap I had kicking around her, and I clamped it onto the bench here, just enough to keep the wheel solid on the bench. I want to be able to rotate the wheel, but I got it set up so that it rests there. That way I can polish this section here and up along here as I'm going, and the wheel won't move around on me. Over here, I got the sticks, and I got one just slightly clamped into the vise, just a little tiny bit, just so I got somewhere where I can actually take it and put it into the wheel. And uh, so that's basically all I did. Nothing fancy. I'm going to start buffing this wheel on, take you along. You actually see now the way it polishes it up. I keep uh, polishing it. You can actually see like the scratches from the 320 and the 400 net in it, and you can rub that compound into it. And you can actually see it if you if you buff it continuously, it'll actually uh, take it out. Over here, there's a few little pits and everything that I done, and I had to turn around and see if I can get them in the light. And if I kept the buffer on them for a long period of time, they kind of pretty well knocked the head and knocked them right nice, flat, and smooth. There's still imperfections in them. Right in along here, but like as anything else, when you stand back here, you never see that, right? So, what's that? I got the first compound done, and now I'm going to move on to this one. I'll clean that wheel off. Uh, I'll just run it on the edge of the bench here and just clean the edge of it off to get most of the compound out of it, and then I'll do the same thing. I'll put that there and I'll uh, put the compound on it, and I'll go over that again. I usually like to start by the, the valve stem so I know where I'm to, and then I'll work my way around the wheel and I'll come back and in by the valve stem. And, you know, I'll do the flats here first, and then I'll do my sides here. I'll do this edge here, right? And I'll just basically hold the buffer flat here, flat here, rolling around the edges, flat here, flat here, rolling around the edges, flat here, right? The compound will come off when you start hitting spots like this, or every now and again I'll be hitting one of these up here. The compound will start going off, right? So, but let's get this buffed up.
So I got the uh, entire wheel done now with the medium compound. Went around it all again and polished it all. I'm over here now and I have the fine stuff set up here on the bench. What I'm going to do now, because it's finer, I got two of these wheels. And what I'm going to do, I have this wheel just for the fine stuff. So I'm going to swap out the two wheels, use this wheel just for the fine stuff itself. And then go around and polish it all again. So now I got that done, here's the last step I'm going to use. The good old auto saw. This is stuff I've used for years for polishing wheels. Polishing aluminum, doing stainless, all that type of stuff. Two of this will go a long way. You don't need a lot of it. Only a small bit of it at a time. That's all you need to do a large section of the wheel. And I'll just go around and I'll just hand polish that just like a coat of wax. This stuff here, the more you rub it in, the more it actually cuts it. I'll do a little section at a time and I'll polish it up and I'll move on. I'll polish it up and I'll move it on. You can see it just goes right black on that. Take a clean rag, well, a po clean polishing rag. Just bring that out. And there's your finish. See how nice that came out there? It got a few flaws and stuff like that in it, but I say when you stand back like this, that looks beautiful. So, I'm going to go ahead now and get this all polished up. So, I got them all polished. Okay. That's that much done. I'm willing to say, my hands, look, they're clean now. I've cleaned them once already. But, um, I have a few days into these. This is tedious stuff. If you come out and spend at it, you're going to have yourself draw. If I come out and spend a couple hours a night, sand them, get sick of it, go in the house out of it, do one at a time, one at a time, that type of thing, right? So I broke it up and, you know, I want to say each wheel probably got a couple hours in them, okay? So there's probably like two, four, six, eight, there's eight hours in two, basically getting these wheels at this point. And there's only the band I'm polishing, right? Next thing I want to get ready now is that I want to put centers in these. So I went online. These here are factory centers. Uh, I wanted something a bit different than them, just to throw the look off of what the wheel is, a factory. Um, so I'm going to uh, bring these up now and test fit them and uh, start mounting the centers. So next thing now, I want to figure out centers for these here. I have a few of these kicking around, these type centers, and they don't fit. They're too big, okay? Uh, so I said to myself, I'm not going to fool around with these. I figured that would stick off too much anyway. It wouldn't look right. What I wanted is I figured if I can get a center, I can just lay there. I can put a couple screws in it and screw it on. So I went out. Went on Amazon. Bought these. Okay. So all I'm going to do is just going to set them up there. Drill the holes. And tap them. Have them set their screws on. And that's it. I won't have to worry about them. I was trying to find ones without the American racing on them. Uh, just a plain flat one. But this is all I can get. Uh, later on, if I want to, I can probably get a little sticker or something, a little Mustang thing or something, get the horse or something to put on it. I'm not much worried about it now, because they are not uh, American Racing Wheels. But I can pretend they are, eh? Right? But i got to do some modifications here. There's a little lip all the way around here. I'm going to have to grind that off to make that fit. So I'm going to just gonna take the grinder now. And just go like that. That's all I'm going to do. <laughs> Leave that off a bit there, and Bob's your uncle. Anyway, and you can see the screws running inside in there, so. See, I can get one of them mounted now. Was simple straightforward now the next problem I got is the way the centers mount when you lay them in place here if you look down you can see the way they kind of like to read into the lug nut hole right so what I'm going to do again with the grinder because these are aluminum I'm just going to grind the edge of these off keep it flat and you won't even notice it I'll just grind the edge of it here grind the edge of it here grind the edge of it here just grind back that little lip there that's on the edge of it there just grind that back flat right along there and it'll be fine so 
Get them grinded off now. see I got them grinding the back and it gives room for the lug nut to go in and out so that's fine for that there what I did then is I moved this around and centered it up so that these holes were in between the two of these here and it was also the same distance right here all the way around and you can see it had to line up with these here points here or hang on at this point here and then this point here these had to line up right what I did then I went in and I marked it with a marker one mark okay and I can do the rest of them yet I'm gonna drill that one out first and tap it and then I'm going to bolt this on and then I'll mark the other ones. As you see, not much to it. All I did is I used a 1-8 drill bit. Okay, that was the size I needed. And I just drilled down through it. I had the right size tap there. Don't ask me what it is. Because I had to hunt for it. And I can't even read what's wrote on it. 
but they takes these screws here these ones here and that's how they're uh, mounted into it so i got them all tapped now i can actually screw that in place and there they are mounted they just put on a little allen key that's all and bolted on so they're permanently mounted on that there now so now that i got them done now all i gotta do is get uh, the other ones ready get all them drilled and tapped and i got them all done some of you saw me growing in this here there is a protective coating on this when i had it turned upside down so i wasn't going to scratch on top of the bench calm down calm down I know I took a grinder too, but look there, here, you can never know that, that's perfect. So here's one too, got all the centers done. Next thing I gotta do is paint them. Now this gray color, hmm, so-so, it looks original, all the type thing. I played around with this here last year when I first got these wheels, trying to figure out a color. This is what I come up with. This is the reason why I wasn't showing you the fort wheel, because I already did this last year. This is my plan with this. Now I gotta repaint that again. Take it all apart and everything, everything. but that's the, the look I'm after. I paint the center gold. This is all I'm using. That is there. It's just a, an engine style metallic satin color. So I wanted to uh, do it. I was looking for the wheel, wheel paint, but this is all I could find today. So that's what's going on. So I'm going to get these now. All the centers taken out of these now. And get them taped up. And uh, get all them painted. Well, that's it for that. Got them done. One can took to do all them. Had just enough. There's very little left in the can now. But I'll let them dry there now and then I can uh, tape them. And tomorrow I'm going to take these out in town and get the tires mounted on them so we can get them mounted on the car. So I'm back from the tire shop and I got all the wheels of the tires mounted. Got the centers put back on them again. I think it looks good. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to mount them on the car. See what he looks like. And there you have it. That's what the wheels looks like on the car. I'd like to have a bit more rubber on the back. Well, so, ah, I see it's good enough for, for now. But uh, I think it looks good on her. Looks nice. I had some time with this, these front ones. These little centers here used to hit off the dust boot on the actual rotor itself and the edge of the rotor. And I had to uh, tap it down and manipulate a bit grindy inside of this a small bit it was just a, a fraction that i wouldn't fit on but i got it so it all bolted on and everything right so it got back on first but uh, that's the wheels just a simple little fix uh like a factory style wheel and i just changed the look of it made it like a little uh, classier looking uh, setup on the car so anyway this is where we're going to leave this one too and until next time we'll catch you on the flip side